Good day everyone, Dr. Polaris here. In early Oligocene Asia, terrestrial life was going through something of a readjustment. The Grand Coupre extinction event hastened the retreat of tropical forests southward towards the equator, turning previously wet and humid wooded areas into arid savanna scrub. Animals either moved south with the forests or faced rapid extinction a fate that claimed Asia's ceratopsids, tyrannosaurids, and most of its hadrosaurs. Exacerbating an already cooling and drying climatic trend, the Indian subcontinent's continued journey northwards began to raise the Himalayas. The ensuing rain shadow effect led to the expansion of dry, savannah-type ecosystems across Eurasia, creating for the first time a vast, semi-arid patchwork of forests and open fields that stretched from Eastern Europe to China. Of course, it did not take long for opportunistic animals to make the best out of these new conditions. In a somewhat ironic twist of fate, the Grand Coupre wiped out many large dinosaurs, but not the largest of all, the sauropods. The opening up of Asia's ecosystems proved a real boon for titanosaurs. So much so, in fact, that the belt of Eurasian scrubland mentioned above has been named the Titanosaur Steppe Belt. While Titanosaurs of fairly modest size had been fairly widespread in Eocene Asia, the weeding out of competition, in particular other large herbivores, left these giants alone with minimal rivalry. From remains recovered so far, there seem to have been two broad groups of these animals present. The indigenous Eurasian Titanotarsine saltosaurids, and Indian Aeolosaurids. The latter first began to appear in Asian deposits during the late Eocene, presumably via island chains from India. These immigrant taxa spread out more widely during the Oligocene and were generally smaller than their more derived cousins. While some Titanotarsines grew to colossal sizes of up to 30 meters or more, Asian Aeolosaurids carved out a niche in the 11 to 18 meter range. It is theorised that the makeup of Asia's Oligocene ecosystems favoured sauropods in that there were widely spaced stands of dry forest with minimal ground cover. Large titanosaurs could steadily cover these distances with ease, making the most of the tall savanna trees present on the steppe. Up to five genera roamed the Central Asian veld over the course of the period. Curiously, medium-sized herbivorous dinosaurs were very rare in early and middle Oligocene Asia. This arid environment was a place of extremes, a land of giants and dwarves. On the one hand, massive titanosaurs were widespread, and on the other, a small diversity of ornithischians were present as well. Hadrosaurs and ceratopsids, previously a mainstay of Asia's Eocene forests, either fell at the Oligocene boundary or saw their ranges severely reduced, with their replacement not being completed until the end of the period. In fact, the largest non-sauropod herbivore present in early Oligocene Asia was the four-metre-long tondiodontid pachycephalosaur Dashvegosaurus altaicus from Mongolia. Along with their smaller and more basal dorsodontid cousins, tondiodontids were members of the clade Ankylotarsiforms. These derived, flat-headed pachycephalosaur descendants originated in the Middle Eocene of Asia and increasingly showed adaptations for browsing and grazing on tough vegetation. While rare and marginal during the Eocene, never exceeding two metres in length, the extinction of most of Asia's hadrosaurs allowed them a chance to diversify. And diversify they did. By the end of the Oligocene, large graviportal forms with chewing batteries of teeth had emerged, sporting all kinds of bizarre cranial horns and bosses. However, during the earlier stages of the period, most were small, speedy bipeds. Despite the proliferation of ankylotarsiforms, more basal tragosauroid pachycephalosaurs were still commonplace in Oligocene Asia. Two families were abundant at this time, the Bugtisaurids and the Nanocornids. These tiny 1-2 to two meter herbivores were close cousins of the North American Paleocornids, and appear to have thrived in the more open conditions of the Oligocene and Miocene. Unlike the odd and highly derived Presidio serratids in North America, Asia's tragosauroids remained small and rather basal in form, 
traits which have enabled these shy, skittish animals to survive to the present. This was likely due to competition from another group of highly cursorial ornithischians, the Ziphosaurids. Living alongside the basal Tragosauroids were the Ziphosaurids, derived relatives of the now extinct Rhododromids. These cursorial bipedal animals were members of the ornithischian clade Parxosauria and were descended from late Cretaceous Orodromids. Ziphosaurids in the Oligocene were confined to Eurasia, despite having first evolved in North America, and inhabited a deer or gazelle-like niche. Their forelimbs were tiny and atrophied, while their hind limbs and tails were elongated and muscular. It would not be until the late Miocene that this group would attain larger sizes. Not all Asian ornithischians were slender and cursorial, however. While the large derived ceratopsids vanished at the Eocene or Ligocene boundary, and the Novoceratopsians were still confined to North America until the late Oligocene, a third minor lineage of ceratopsians dwelt in Asia, the Hippogryphoidians. While common and highly diverse in modern times, these small basal animals were rare during the Paleogene, likely descended from the very basal late Cretaceous Micropachycephalosaurus. Hippogryphoidians can trace their ancestry back to the late Paleocene Chinese Plenoceratops. These stocky little herbivores were remarkably basal, barely differing in appearance from the Jurassic Yinlong and Chaoyangsaurus. Needless to say, this clade has a long ghost lineage in Asia, extending back to the early Cretaceous if we discount the very fragmentary Micropachycephalosaurus. During the Eocene, Plenoceratops gave rise to the other families in this clade. The earliest of these were the Hystricosaurids, small herbivores found in both Asia and North America that showed adaptations for burrow digging. Their powerful jaws and sturdy teeth indicate a diet of tough vegetation, perhaps supplemented with the occasional insect or piece of carrion. These successful colonial animals adapted to the drier conditions with ease, and were common finds in the Oligocene fossil beds of China and Mongolia. Of note here is a highly unusual Hippogryphoidian from early Oligocene Mongolia that has proven very difficult to classify, Spinoceratops lohiculus. This thick-set 2.5 metre long animal was quadrupedal, with a large heavy skull and moderately elongated neural spines on its vertebrae. Phylogenetic studies have placed Spinoceratops in a more derived position than the Hystricosaurids, but in a more basal position than the later Hippogryphoidians from the end of the period. It is truly a one-of-a-kind animal, the only genus in its own separate family. With such an abundant source of prey items, it is no wonder that several theropod lineages were on hand to feed on them. Boreoraptor dromaeosaurs, as with the rest of former Laurasia, were the premier ambush hunters here. The Grand Coupre extinction event seemingly had very little impact on these predators, and they thrived in the dry, open savannas of Oligocene Asia. Everything that was not an adult or adolescent sauropod would have been fair game. This list included Ziphosaurids, Tragosauroids, and Hippogryphoidian ceratopsians. In the early Oligocene, the most common of these dromaeosaurs was the 3.5 meter Typhoraptor pervagus. In fact, this was the oldest and smallest within its genus. Later North American species were larger and more robust. Velociraptorine dromaeosaurs managed to survive past the Eocene-Oligocene boundary in Asia, only to decline in diversity over the course of the period. Finally, the arboreal Microraptorians, once common and widespread across Eurasia during the Eocene, completely disappear from northern and central Asia during the Grand Coupre event. Their remains were completely absent from Mongolia, Russia and northern China, but thankfully managed to survive in tropical refugia further south in Thailand, Myanmar and Pakistan. Although avoiding the grim fate of their kin in Europe, Asian Microraptorians saw their diversity halved going into the Oligocene, the survivors were all small, one metre or less generalists, and, by the beginning of the Miocene, began to recolonise much of their former territory. The big Dynamotyrannosaurines were notable only by their absence. The large Tyrannosaurids became extinct in Asia during the Grand Coupre event, 
although we are still not sure why, given that their close relatives survived in North America. It is likely that the climate chaos had a greater impact on Asia's ecosystems, but this is hard to prove definitively. Whatever the case, the only tyrannosaurs left standing in Oligocene Asia were the Alioramoids. These gracile, leggy, long-snouted predators never reached the massive sizes of the Tyrannosaurids. On the contrary, during the Paleogene, Alioramoids avoided competition with their gargantuan, bone-crushing relatives by inhabiting the niche of cursorial pursuit hunters. Sander Tyrannus tail hardy from the early Oligocene of Mongolia was a typical example of the group, possessing a slender build and thin blade-like teeth. Fossil evidence suggests that Eocene Alioramoids were social animals that hunted in multi-age groups, effectively outcompeting the solitary juvenile Tyrannosaurids that inhabited a similar ecological role. Interestingly, Alioramoids never exceeded 7 metres in length, and the increasingly open, semi-arid bushlands of Oligocene Asia exerted the evolutionary pressure to remain modest in size, and to develop further adaptations for a cursorial existence. By the end of the period, many Alioramoids had shrunk down to the 3 to 6 metre range and were very successful. They inhabited a continuous range across much of Eurasia and, by the early Miocene, had pushed south into Africa. In contemporary North America, Ochisoraptorid oviraptorosaurs and Nyctalestid troodontans inhabited this niche. Curiously, though, the largest carnivorous dinosaur found at the Sander Gol formation was not even a Salurosaur, but an Abelosaur. During the Paleocene and Eocene, these ancient scaly theropods were native to Europe and India, as well as other parts of old Gondwana. When both of these land masses connected with Asia during the early Oligocene, Abelosaurs moved north from India and east from Europe. In Asia, they found a land devoid of big tyrannosaurids. The Alioramoids were only medium-sized cursorial hunters, and managed to outcompete the smaller Indian Rajasaurines. The European Majungasaurines, however, had become large specialised sauropod hunters during their Paleogene isolation. With the spread of the Titanosaur steppe across Eurasia, the Majungasaurines simply followed their prey into Asia where they faced very little competition. The dry, arid conditions and more open landscapes suited them well, enabling these predators to track their enormous prey over long distances. Unlike the Alioramoids with which they shared their environment, Asian abelosaurs were solitary animals built for hit-and-run style ambush hunting, crashing mouth-first into young or weakened titanosaurs, ripping off a chunk of flesh and then retreating. This process would be repeated until the target collapsed due to blood loss and shock. The size of these abelosaurs ranged between 8 and 11 metres in length, significantly larger than any other Asian theropod. Indeed, at Sandagol, the genus Gengisaurus carnifex was the apex predator, measuring 10 to 11 metres long and weighing approximately 6.5 tonnes. This animal was heavily built, with a massive, blunt-faced skull equipped with small, blade-like teeth. Its hind limbs were stocky and lacked adaptations for cursoriality seen in South American abelosaurs, an animal built for power and stamina rather than speed. However, by the end of the Oligocene, Asian ecosystems began to change once again. The open savanna forests on which the big titanosaurs relied began to disappear to be replaced by grasslands. The largest titanosaurs became extinct across much of Eurasia during this time, although smaller grazing forms held on in India, southern China and southeast Asia. With them, the abelosaurs quickly followed suit. Smaller, more generalised theropods were also commonplace. As they had been during the late Cretaceous of Mongolia, oviraptorosaurs were widespread and successful during the Oligocene. Several different families were present at this one site. Two genera of the omnivorous Cranosaurids lived here. One of these was a quite small 2-3 to three meter animal with a very broad diet, while the other was a peculiarly large herbivore, Ertinoraptor giganteus, up to 8 metres in length. The latter appears to have been adapted for browsing on tough, fibrous desert vegetation. The slender Cursorial Cosaraptorids 
inhabited an almost ornithomimosaur-like niche, feeding on low-growing plants and avoiding the predatory intentions of the Aleoramoid tyrannosaurs. Tiny, agile avimimids were also present and fed on insects, seeds and woody plants. The aggressive, omnivorous brontavids were not to be found here, seemingly being limited to more equable climes further to the south. They would return later during the early Miocene, however. The end of the Eocene marked the extinction of the basal troodontans in Asia. Only the browsing, herbivorous nothrosaurids survived this period of transition, living much as the therizinosaurs once did during the Cretaceous. However, during the early Oligocene, the first of the beaked rhynchorostrans migrated into Asia via Beringia from North America. These adaptable animals quickly moved into the niches once inhabited by their more basal, toothy cousins, with some becoming increasingly herbivorous as the Oligocene progressed. By the end of the period, the first of the strictly herbivorous Rumanornithids would appear, which would go on to massively diversify during the Miocene. During the early Oligocene, however, Asian rhynchorostrans were rather generalised animals that fed on fruit, small animals, seeds and low-growing plants. Moving on to the mammals, multituberculates were by far the most common small animals at the Sandagol. Many groups were present, inhabiting all sorts of niches. A diverse assemblage of Jatochkatheroids scurried about in the undergrowth, and ranged in lifestyle from Jaboa-like hopping insectivores to stocky, hamster-like burrowing herbivores. Tiny, mouse-like viridiomyids emerged after dark to feed on seeds and invertebrates, while chimelomyids inhabited woodchuck-like niches, and taniolaboids dug burrows like gophers to feed on underground tubers. Other mammal groups were noticeably rarer, with only one genus of acerictid metatherian and three eutherians found at the site so far. One of the eutherians was an early member of the diverse Glirungulatan lineage, chimelestans with a derived rodent-like dentition reminiscent of the tilodontids from our timeline. Unlike the tilodonts, glirungulates were small animals, which were rabbit and hyrax-like. In modern times, these mammals are diverse and widespread, inhabiting all sorts of environmental roles, from large fossorial wombat-like diggers to fast-running, hair-like grazers. In fact, in outward appearance, they resemble the smaller notoungulates from our Earth, South America. As non-placental eutherians, they lack hooves and instead possess claws like those of rodents and lagomorphs. In the Oligocene, however, glirungulatans were mostly small grazers of C3 grasses. The other two eutherians were an elephant shrew-like gypsonictopid and a hedgehog-like tylocerichoid boreo-eutherian placental. Up until the Middle Oligocene, true placentals were rare in Asia. However, boreo-eutherians began to diversify by the end of the period, replacing and outcompeting many of the older eutherians native to the continent. Non-placental eutherians were gradually pushed into more marginal niches as the neogene progressed, albeit with some exceptions, such as the glirungulates. By the late Oligocene and early Miocene, placental mammals had produced small herbivores, rodent-like noras, selenodon-like omnivores and more. Remains of squamates and other reptiles are also pretty rare, but a handful of genera have been described and named. These include a very large carnivorous helodermatoid, roughly 1.5 metres long, small herbivorous polyglyphanodontians, and a few tiny insectivorous skinkymorphs. Thank you for listening, everyone. Next week, I'll be covering the kagu, a strange, almost flightless bird from the islands of New Caledonia. See you again soon. Cheerio.